On this episode, we talk about as-is sales and value range pricing. Thanks for watching Ask a Realtor episode six. My name is Jason Cassidy with City Consulting Group in downtown San Diego. If you have any questions for me, use Twitter hashtag Ask a Realtor or ask me directly at Jay Cassidy. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, episode six, I'm excited for this one. I, uh, I don't have a fun fact about the number six, so we're just gonna go straight into the show. What does it really mean when a home is for sale as is? What's an as-is sale? It's a great question. Um, I've had this question a couple times this week, actually. Um, as-is sales are uh, sales where the seller is selling the home as-is, so they're not willing to do any repairs. So the seller might know that there's some stuff going on with the house, cracked plumbing, whatnot, um, and they're selling the house as-is. So now you as the buyer, you won't have the opportunity to give them a repair request um, and try to get some of those fixed during escrow. So now you still have the protection of an inspection contingency, which is good because you can get in there and poke around, bring in your home inspector, and if you find something um, you know, devastating to the house, you can still back out under your inspection contingency and keep your earnest money deposit. You just won't have the chance to get those repairs worked out with the seller. So now you generally see this a lot with uh, bank-owned properties, uh, foreclosures, REOs, you know, um, distress sales, things like that. Um, in a traditional sale, the seller will usually allow some give and take with the repair work, but um, an as-is sale will not. So that's the basic of it there. Um, or basic answer of it there is, uh, is an as-is sale is a sale where the seller will not do any repairs um, for the buyer. What is value range pricing? Good question. What's a value range? A, uh, a value range is kind of a hot topic right now in the real estate community. You've got realtors that love it and they use it on every listing, and you've got realtors that, that think it's a gimmick and they don't think it's being truthful. Um, I think the answer is somewhere in between there. I think with the value range, what you have is you have a listing at, um, hypothetically, let's say uh, 315000 And um, to, to, to utilize the value range properly, you would put a bottom on the range of 299000 So now you have a list price of three nine. 315, but you have a value range of 299 to 315. And so what that does is uh, um, it captures all those buyers who are searching online or in their MLS who are searching 300 and under. And they would have never seen your listing at 315, but now since you have the value range, they see your listing. And then you're, what you're hoping is that they then love your listing and they decide to come in and offer on it. And so as a realtor and a seller, you're still hoping to get 315, but you're attracting all the people who are searching 300 and under. So now some people and some realtors don't like it. They think it's a bit of a gimmick because you're you're never saying you're going to take 299, which is what the people who are searching 300 and under are looking for. You're just trying to get more eyes onto your property, or if you're on the other side, you you think that you're trying to trick someone to get into your property. And so there's a there's a little bit of a um, you know a contentious issue around the value range pricing. I think it, when used properly, I think if you price something at like um, 305, uh, hypothetically, we'll say that, and then you value range 299 to 305. That's a good way of using the value range. Uh, now we can discuss why you would price your property at 305 anyways, but um, neither here nor there. So that's a good way to use the value range. Uh, what I see is people using the value range for hundreds of thousands of dollars or something like that. You know, I don't quite understand that. Um, you know, 1. 1.6 to 1.8. Like, what's the point? Someone's searching for a house at 1.8 is probably searching at 1.6. No one's stopping at 1.7. That's not a catch number. So what the, the, the real usage of the value range is to get between catch numbers. And, and I'd say, you know, below a million dollars, that's every 50 grand or so. Um, you probably, you know, you don't want to be at 451. You would list at, you know, 450 even. You wouldn't list at 451. And so if you did, you'd maybe do a value range, you know, 449 to 451 or just list at 450. But, you know, who knows? So anyways, um, value ranges are out there. You may not even see them if you're a buyer on Zillow or Trulia or Redfin. They show up on the MLS on the back end and that dictates which search results they show up under. Um, and so that's the, the core of the value range there. Thanks. Thanks for watching Ask a Realtor episode six. If you have a question, go on Twitter, use hashtag Ask a Realtor or write me directly at Jay Cassidy. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, look forward to new videos. Thanks.